If that's okay with you. If not, we've got a problem. Um, Tanya, would you hit that light switch right there, please? Thank you. Um, we have been working through a study on what's my role, what's your role. And the intent of this study is to look at how God has designed the church, the body of Christ, to operate, to function, to minister. Uh, and we, we're going to continue that series uh, down the road. Uh, up to this point, I've, I've kind of brought the, the concept that uh, God called Israel as a group to be his own possession, that he called them to be a nation of priests, that through him, uh, through them, he would bless the world. Uh, we looked at uh, how God uh, reorganized that uh, so that the uh, Levites were chosen as a tribe and from them the line of Aaron to be priests. Uh, we then uh, overlaid that into the New Testament with the, the calling of the elders and the deacons uh, and, and looked in, in First Peter where we are now a, uh, a nation of priests. Uh, everyone that comes to Christ in faith becomes a priest. All right? Now, um, that is a high calling. But it comes with responsibility. And what I would like to do today, I want us to discuss as a church, what is Jesus Community Church all about? Okay? I'm not talking about our theology. I'm talking about our purpose. What is the purpose of Jesus Community Church? Okay? I'm not talking about programs. There's a lot of bad stuff said about programs. Uh, quite honestly, uh, you can give it whatever name you want it to be. You know, what does Shakespeare say? You know, does a rose by any other name smell different? No, they still stink. Um, but what are we about? What has God called us to be? Now, I've got my pad of paper here. <clears throat> And my pen. I'm ready. Are you ready? Pop quiz. But see, this is this is a problem at our church. We really don't know what we're supposed to be about. And, and, and this is not unique to us. It really isn't. It's, uh, without um, purpose, it's so easy to fall into complacency. You know, um, I, I'm very territorial. I know where my seat is. Please don't sit in my seat. Okay? Um, we, we have our routines down. Now, you know, we, we a lot of times look kind of cockeyed at the more liturgical churches and their uh, rituals. But we have the same. We just don't call it that. You know, uh, for example, how do we start the service? The blowing of the shofar. And by the way, Nathan, I was telling you to back up from Doreen, because I thought you were going to blast it right at the back of her head. And that would have been unpleasant for her. Um, but we, we start with the shofar. And then what? Yeah, we, we usually do an introductory song. Uh, we do that on purpose to kind of let everybody know, hey, we're starting. 
And then we uh, do the first one, we do the greeting, uh, usually open in prayer or read a scripture. Uh, we do the rest of the song part, the music part of the worship service. And then we get into the word and, and we have our comfortable routines. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that the routines have to change. But what I'm saying is, what are we supposed to be doing? Okay. What is the purpose of the Bride of Christ, the church, the body of Christ? What, what, is, what is the purpose? In a general sense, what can we say? Spreading the good news. Spreading good news. Hang on just a second. I don't write very fast. When I do, I can't read it. Glorify God. Edify one another. My writing's getting worse. Worse. Um, Monica, I heard you say something, but I didn't catch it. Light and salt, yeah. What? Light. Being a light to the world. And I, yeah, I said I added salt. Okay, what else? I heard an interesting thing on this uh, Christmas thing. You know, you always hear about bringing Christ to the nation, bringing Christ to the people. Their terminology was bringing children to Christ, mm -hmm. bringing children to Him. That's a little different concept, and I think it's worthy of it. It's, it's a worthwhile endeavor. Yes. Bringing people to Christ. <coughs> okay. And how do you do that? Sharing. Sharing. Mm -hmm. Testimony, witness. That's right. Do you accept being a needs to be firmly established in the truth. Okay, that's that's a condition whereby we are able to operate. Oh, I'm, I'm going to move that. Say that again. Truth seekers. We are called to be truth seekers. What did you say, Dad? Firmly established in the truth. Okay. To reflect damage. I'm sorry? Bring, oh, I said to reflect the love of Jesus and to bring encouragement and help and love to our neighbors and the other folks in the community as community. well as to yep. each other. Okay. Okay. Um, Norma, what did you say just a minute ago? Um, I was just kind of following up on the question. Yeah, but what, what did you truth, say? Truth seekers. Truth seekers, gotcha. Yeah. Can I add the normas and be truth bringers? Yeah. To fight for the truth. Become more like Jesus. Hang on just a second, you guys. Okay, uh, I would fight for the truth, and then what did you say? Oh, um, to live more like the word calls us to live, and to okay. be more like Jesus. Right, okay. To grow okay. in the maturity of Christ and yep. the Holy Spirit. Okay. Break. Yes. A lot. Okay. Uplift each other in prayer. I'm sorry? Uplift each other in prayer. Okay. Word and truth. Yeah. I, I just heard noise. 
I, I, I think I heard encourage. Encouragers. Encouragers. Okay, Richard, I heard you say something. Learn the truth. Pass down our faith to our children. Worship God. Okay, let's let's hold on for just a second. I'm going to go over the the list that I have, and, and if I uh, messed up your your suggestion. Uh, I apologize. So I, I've kind of broken this up into two different directions. Uh, on the one side, um, there are things that we should be doing outward from this this fellowship. On the other side, we have things that are uh, things that help us to be a fellowship, okay? And, and some of these will actually go on, on both sides. So as far as, as uh, Jesus Community Church or, or the Church of God in general, universal, uh, how we interact with com community around us, uh, spreading the good news, so evangelism, uh, following Christ, and that actually could be uh, both of these, uh, and I say that because that is something that typically we see as building up within the body of believers, but uh, we are told that the world is going to know us by the love we have one for another. Uh, and if the love that we have one for another only takes place inside these doors, the world will never get to see it. Um, so following Christ, while that's something that, that we get built up in here to do, it's something that has to be seen out there uh, to glorify God. And Nathan, I really expected you to say and enjoy him forever. Lori added that quietly. Oh, okay, yeah. I missed that part. Because uh, that's, that's an important one because I'm, I'm still learning that one. Now glorify God is another one that can be on each side. Um, unfortunately, most of the time, when we say glorify God, we mean in here, okay? Uh, through the, the worship and music and prayer and the word, we uh, glorify God here. Um, how do we glorify God? And don't, don't answer, this is rhetorical. We're going to come back and kind of work through this. How do we glorify God out there? Okay, that's something we need to be thinking about. Um, edify each other, and that actually would be more on the internal side, um, except that, um, <clears throat> we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, light and salt, again, this is something that specifically in Scripture is addressing who and what we are to the world around us. Uh, being an example. I'm just going to read through these real quick and then I'm going to come back because I'm, I'm kind of seeing two, two thoughts going on here. Being an example, bringing people to Christ, uh, to reflect Jesus to the community, uh, to be truth bringers, uh, and to fight for the truth, to be encouragers, and to pass down our faith. Now, what generally is dealt with more internally, uh, to be rooted in the truth, and again, that's uh, being truth seekers, um, to grow into maturity, to pray, uh, to learn the truth, and to worship God. Now, the external things kind of fall into uh, two different categories. Um, and, and what I see here is that there's one category that is who we are, and the second category is what we do, okay? Um, because we are the representatives 
of Christ to the world around us. Um, as such, we are different. We are not like the world. Now, um, <clears throat> the world should see us as different. There should be something that would indicate that we are not like the rest of the world. Um, years ago, uh, I quit playing softball for any church league, any church league at all, because those people were not Christ-like. I would go down and play with the community league and the beer league, and those people reflected Christ a heck of a lot more than the people that I saw playing for the churches. And I think that's a shame. Um, so, how do we, as a church, uh, you know, working through, let's, let's look at the internal things here. Um, to be truth seekers, to, to know the truth, that we can be rooted in the truth, and being rooted in the truth, that we could take it out to the world. Um, how do we do that? How do we um, seek out the truth? Read the word. Read the word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is... Uh, no. This is one of those things that should not even need to be said. But it needs to be said. We have got to be in the Word. Okay? We have got to be saturating our minds, our souls, with the Word. Uh, and we have so, so many different ways that we can do this. Um, you know, I've got the, uh, the Bible app on my phone that has more translations in it. Years and years ago, I got the uh, uh, Logos Bible on CD, and I was so excited because it had four translations on it. I could put them up and see them side by side, and um, you know, I, I've got that in a single app on my phone now. And it's got 30 plus translations in it. Um, we have so much access to the Word of God. Uh, how, let me ask you this, just, just off the top of your head. How many Bibles are in your house? How many Bibles? Okay. Well, you have one less because I took the archaeology one. So you got 49. It, does anybody have less than five? In your house, Satch. I can only count four. Really? You have two and I have two. Where are the other? I have three, oh, yeah. and you have two, and then there's four more on the shelf on the bottom left. Oh. <laughs> um, the, the fact that we have so many Bibles in our homes um, really makes us without excuse. We're really without excuse. Um, you can, within a, a, just a few minutes, set up a daily reading plan uh, where you know you can go through the Bible in a year, or you can go through the Bible in two years, um, whatever you know the different plans allow. Um, but I'm I'm talking even beyond that. Uh, I'm talking about dedicating ourselves. <coughs> to knowing the Word, to getting it knit into our very being, such that when uh, a trial comes, we know what God's Word says about it. Okay. So, being in the Word. Um, so, being truth seekers, um, do, what do we need besides being in the Word? Yep. Not just know the word, but somehow yep. act it out. Godly counsel. Yep. Yes. 
Yep, godly counsel. Um, huh. you got to have the spirit. The, the spirit of truth that was sent to teach us all the things that, that we needed to know. Um, now, I, I will just... Th there has to be an accountability to the word. Um, because... You know, you can cut and step and paste and copy whatever you want out of the Word and come up with a gospel that is not a gospel. Okay? Um, I, I personally, I do not like and I do not recommend the, uh, oh, see, I just lost the name of it. Well, it's a particular Bible. No, well, yeah, I don't. I don't recommend the message at all um, because that's not a translation. That's a a. Uh, it's not even a paraphrase. It's an opinion. Um, and and while it says some really neat things, and, and I think in too many places it deviates from the simple truth of the word. Um, amplified. I don't recommend the amplified because I don't like the way that they set it up. They set it up such that any possible translation of a particular word is put into the passage. The problem with that is, is that the, the passage actually tells you which version of the word is appropriate. You don't get to mix and match and pull out what you want. God's spirit has already taken care of that. Uh, we, we don't get to, to alter it to suit our taste for the day. We don't get to filter it so that it's more comfortable for us. We let the Spirit of God tell us what the plain reading of Scripture is. And then we adjust it. Okay? So, uh, being truth seekers, getting into the Word, seeking counsel, uh, I would add to that, um, you know, being uh, in fellowship, uh, to have accountability so that we can uh, hold one another to the truth of the word. Um, so let's let's go down a little bit more here. So um, in the church, and I don't want to dwell here because because really my point is that we dwell here enough. Okay, we come here on Sundays, pretty consistently on Sundays. We're here. Okay. Uh, we have Bible studies throughout the week. We have potlucks and, and different events that are going on. Um, so I don't want to dwell here very much. That we'll have to at some point, because we have to address this, make sure these things are being accomplished before we can do the other things. So, um, outreach. What, what is the last commandment, the great commission that Jesus gave, or that the, the Spirit of God gave in the Word of God for us to do. Oh. Go. And actually, that's that's not a directive as if you're not going right now. It's, it's actually a statement that you are going as you go. You're already moving because nobody lives here, do they? You have lives. You have things going on outside of here, what it's saying is as you are living this life, what do we do? What's, what's the passage? Okay, this is, this is one that I learned in King James. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, that predicated on the previous verse that says, all authority in heaven and earth is mine. So Jesus is telling us, I'm the boss, this is what I want you to do. Now, the first testimony that we have before people is what they see us do. Um, years ago, when I was a teenager, I worked at Dairy Queen, which was not a good place for a diabetic to work. Um, the owner of the store, his name was Harry, and Harry subscribed to the idea that uh, you needed to keep 
the property outside the building clean because if people pulled up and the trash was overflowing and there were spills on the, the sidewalk and cups in the parking lot, that the first impression that they have of his store is not good. Okay? Now that goes for us as well in that the first encounter that we have with people can make or break any ministry that we have ongoing from that point. Okay? Um, because, uh, you know, I, I told the story a while back about trying to replace the pane of glass uh, that, that was broken and uh, we didn't have the glazers point so I, I, Christy convinced me to try and use little nails and tap them in and I went tap, 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 crack and, and the, the entire glass broke. And I got mad and I threw the hammer down and I'm, no, I shouldn't have done that. Why do I? And I turned around and looked and there was Donovan and another little boy from the neighborhood looking around the corner like this. Okay. Um, what we do matters. How we comport ourselves matters. Um, we're out of time. I want to come back to this next week. Your homework for this week is to start coming up with these key ideas as to what from this point on will define Jesus Community Church. Okay. What are we to be about?